Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, and I am excited about today's show, and I'll tell you why. We're going to continue our Names of God series, and the two that we come to today, I don't know that they're familiar with you, but where they are used is familiar with you, and I think it'll bring more depth more depth to your understanding. And the first passage and the first name that we'll talk about today is found in Psalm 23. And Psalm 23 is one that I know you're familiar with if you've not actually memorized it, which many of us have. But of course, we've memorized it in English and it was written in Hebrew. And it starts right off, remember it? The Lord is what? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And that word that he is, the Lord is my shepherd, Yahweh Rohi, R-O-H-I is the second part of that compound name. And it means literally the Lord, our shepherd. The Lord, our shepherd. It's really interesting because, as you know, David was a tender of sheep earlier in his life, prior to him eventually, what, becoming king and author of a lot of the Psalms and all the things that he did, starting with David and Goliath. Remember where he was when he went off to fight Goliath? He was out tending his sheep. In fact, it was... It was the skill that God had already sovereignly built into David's life, that he was a shepherd, because a shepherd learned how to use a sling to ward off wolves or other attackers of his sheep. Isn't that just like God, to use something in our life like that? And then when David stopped to, to pen this great, great psalm, Psalm 23. I just believe he pondered the relationship that he had himself with his sheep. And he realized that that's kind of his relationship with his God. That, that as the sheep should follow David as their shepherd, we as God's sheep, if we want to stay safe and secure, we need to follow the Lord. And that would be our relationship. We're like sheep gone astray, and we need to follow him. And where he goes, we need to go. Where he directs us, we need to be there. The Lord is our shepherd, just like David was the shepherd to our sheep. And that was the compound name, the, the name Yahweh Roe. Yahweh Roe. Wow. The very name of God reflects what our relationship with him needs to be and should be. Well, the second name that I want us to talk about today is Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh Sabaoth. Now, this name is used in a song that you probably are very familiar with. And it's called, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Written by Martin Luther. You remember that? A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Okay, and it goes on from there. I apologize for singing. I won't do it again. At least not for a long time, probably. But I wanted to remind you what song I was talking about. It's an old, old classic hymn. Like, like 500 years old. And in that, one of the verses says, Lord Sabaoth is his name. And that name means the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. What does that mean? I mean, that's the literal translation. 
And I'm going to read you a passage where it is used. It's a really interesting passage in light of what I just sang. But the Lord of hosts, it means hordes or lots of, lots of, in this case, hordes of both angels and of people. Angels and people. He is the Lord over all. The Lord Almighty, the Lord of hosts. He is heaven and earth. He is over the inhabitants of both, of both. And then he's the Lord over Jews and Gentiles, rich and poor, master, slave, and whatever your lot in life. Lord Sabaoth is his name. It is one of many names that we're talking about. And I hope we're grasping on to each and every one of them. This one is so expressive of his majesty and God's power and the authority of God. And it, it just shows that he is able to accomplish everything that he desires to do. Lord Sabaoth is his name. Now we find this in Psalm 46. Psalm 46, if you if you're looking it up, but or make or taking notes. Psalm 46 at verse 6. At verse 6. And here's what the psalmist says. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, just his voice, and the earth melts. Yes, verse 7, this is where it's used. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Isn't that interesting, isn't it? But the Lord Almighty, that is the, the translation for Lord or Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh, that name above all, that name. The I am, the ultimate I am. The English guess at how that's said, and we did the show on that, just that part of the name last week. I urge you, though, to just grab on to this. Lord Sabaoth is his name, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one, and it says the Lord, well, so verse 7, El Yahweh Sabaoth is what the Greek starts. The Lord Almighty, the Lord of hosts would be just a fine translation there, is with us, and the God of Jacob is our fortress. And I said I found that interesting because you don't hear that word fortress very often. And I just wonder if Martin Luther, when he wrote, a mighty fortress is our God, he, pro he had to be looking at this verse. Psalm 46, verse 7, because both parts of that verse are in his song. When he says later, a mighty, well, he says a mighty fortress. And then, and, and, and the psalmist said, the God of Jacob is our fortress. And the first part of that, Lord Sabaoth is with us. And Martin Luther said, Lord Sabaoth is his name. And when you sing that song, you sing, that line. I love it. I love it. You know, here we have a God or a, 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 a psalmist who writes these words approximately 3,000 years ago, give or take a few hundred. <laughs> I'm not sure. But it was so significant that Martin Luther put it to song and we sing it yet today. Oh, God is good to keep reminding him of this, these things. Hey, we're going to have another great day on the names of God tomorrow. I surely hope you will not miss it. God bless. See you tomorrow. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him